Hello, it's me here, and welcome back to the Nice Nation, where the inhabitants don't exactly live up to the name. Although I suppose that could be rather subjective, depending on what your definition of nice is. And if you're a human-consuming psychopath, who knows which way your moral compass points in that regard. Let me introduce you to our anti-heroes. Or perhaps villains is more accurate. First up, we have got Lass, who is a deserter from the Empire. She is our resident combat specialist, boasting some stats that really support this. She also likes to get her cook on. Next we have Coldwell, our grumpy granny, who hasn't yet been converted to our evil little ways, so she likes to potter around in a sulk most of the time. She likes to mine, but also hates to mine due to her ideology. It's a interesting paradox. And last but certainly not least, Gumpo, our original pawn. We started with him and just his bare little bottom. He's come a fair way since we first met him. He is our main builder, as well as being a little bit of a social butterfly. Now that's out of the way, let's get to some actual content, shall we? As I mentioned earlier, Coldwell has a lot of mental breaks. Eating humans just isn't for everyone, I guess. It really isn't too long until she has a particularly bad one, and goes to give Lass a good old stabby stab while she was asleep. Gumpo rushes in to give a helping hand and this 81 year old is quickly sat down. Seems like Coldwell could only get a couple of toe stabs in. Quite fortunate. But enough is enough, her mood swings are a little too much to deal with at this point. So it's time to convert her to the dark side. A female psychic drone rolls in, shortly followed by a combat supplier, which is great news, because we are almost out of ammunition. Since we are playing with Combat Extended today, we are going to have to craft our own ammunition, but we sadly haven't progressed far enough down the tech tree for such things. And what is even more sad is they don't have the correct ammo for the guns we have. We have a grand total of 7 shots left, so we will have to mainly rely on spiky sticks, crudely made shivs, and maybe even a bow or two if we're feeling particularly fancy. A bit of good news comes in, Coldwell is having a crisis of belief. I would wager it was the human based chow we've been feeding her. Gumpo's tree meditation time has been severely hindered recently by a great number of things, but he is going to make a strong push into getting himself some magical powers. The first bit of downtime comes in the form of farming. The growing season is finally here as the snow begins to melt away, and we plop down some rice. We have a rather small window in which we can grow, so it's time to plant. A bit of deja vu. A challenge to deal with some miserable weather. Again, a excellent plant pot is up for grabs, but I decide against it. Not entirely sure why, but there you are. Coldwell still isn't a happy chappy, and goes into a little daze. I've still got my money on the fact it's probably all the raw human meat we give her. Now it's been over a hundred days, and we don't have the Rimworld staple. You know, a perimeter wall and spike trap combo. So it's time we fix that, albeit rather slowly. We have our first visitor, who has fallen down from the heavens. She supposedly breathes like a creep, but does foster some decent stats. So we haul her in, with the plan in mind of making her our very first unwilling helper. You see, the fine people of the nice nation need such helpers in order to keep everyone happy. After a few nibbles on some raw berries, she's ready for a life of back-breaking labour. Or so I thought, but more on that later. In other news, Coldwell is getting rather close to becoming one of us. And in some less good news, some angry doggos tear their way into our base. Fortune had it, we had some visitors to deal with the brunt of these scary pooches. Lass throws out our very last bit of ammunition as these brave gentlemen go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the intruders. We just sit back for a little while, 
and only lend a helping hand with the last few stragglers. Lass and bowl cut boy here resort to fisty cuffs in order to get the last one down. He really isn't looking too good. But nowhere near as dire as his chum, who collapses in our kitchen. I'm sure he'll be alright. Gumpo even uses his writhing body as a seat for a spot of breakfast. So he wasn't alright, but we now have some more human meat to add to our coffers. So no complaints from me. Speaking of complaining, we should get a lot less of this now. Coldwell has been converted to our human eating ways. Thanks to this kind gentleman in the comments, I now know you can simply release her after the conversion process, if she is already in your colony. Here's to being a little bit less of a melon. No time to celebrate, however. Some angry greenskins rock up. This is a problem. We have zero in the way of guns. And they outnumber us more than two to one. Nevertheless, we arm ourselves with some random shivs we have lying around. This will upset everyone. We don't like peasant weapons here at the Nice Nation. But we must do our best playing around our only defence. Randomly distributed wooden traps. Our grumpy granny is still, well, grumpy and goes into a tantrum. Rather unfortunate timing. Things are looking a little dicey. The assault begins, with just Gumpo and Lass to hold down the fort. The plan is to guide as many as we possibly can right into our traps, and hope for the best. We lead one inside, isolating him from his comrades. This seems to have snapped Coldwell out of whatever mental trauma she was having, so she's back in the fight. Gumpo and Coldwell deal with one while a trap takes out another. One more goes down and the rest run for the hills. That was a little close for comfort. Not too sure if anyone noticed during the mayhem, but Coldwell has gained a trauma-induced savant, meaning she can no longer speak, but has a healthy boost to her manipulation. Really not too sure what to make of this. I think it's good. Other than that, the only noticeable damage done was a loss of finger for Lass, so not too shabby, given our dire circumstances. But now we do have some human bits to go along with our rice. That is our go-to combination. Another interesting combination is polar bear plus beer. We have got ourselves a drunk polar bear in our kitchen. This certainly is Rimworld. Looks like he's sleeping it off. Best leave him to it. Our first batch of research is in. One step closer to getting ourselves some actual guns. So gunsmithing is next, to finish the job. We also have another job to finish off. Dean here. Sorry pal. Dean has reminded me that we have a massive abundance of human skin, just lying about. Probably best we put it to good use. What use is that I hear you ask? A ceremonial drum, where we can have a party of eating. This involves manning the drum and laying out a fat beat while everyone else begins to gyrate. Lovely stuff. Or not, it was supposedly rather boring. Well, perhaps just a normal party. With a lot less spooky skulls and human skin drumming, this will counteract the previously poopy party. We get a mission to host some refugees. Now, normally we would just eat them, as is tradition, but we could really use the extra help. Progression has been rather slow, so this is an opportunity to get some of the grunt work taken care of, while we work on more important things. Now, this is a bit of a motley crew. Not really having any qualities deeming them worthy of becoming a permanent addition to the colony, but we can put them to work hauling and such. On their very first job, they get eyed up by a hungover polar bear. Not a situation you want to be in, but they uh, somehow managed it. Faina finds herself on the wrong end of his jaws, but manages to find refuge inside. This drunken menace finds himself another snack, but we should probably deal with him before something similar happens again. Was that foreshadowing? 
Time to assess the damage. Oh, bugger. Well, he's only gone and taken her hand. Hard luck. Gumpo quickly heals her up into working shape and sends her back out to do some hard labour. Look at them all go. We're really getting some mundane tasks done. Letting them live definitely was the right decision. For now. However, we have a role to designate. Gumpo will now be our moral guide. He's the only chap who really warrants this position. So time for spooky skulls again. Now Gumpo is a big shot moral guide, he has some demands. A visage mask and a head wrap. We are unable to make these at this current moment, so he's just going to have to wait on that one. But his role does come with some new magical powers. Most importantly of which, for right now, is Convert. Lynx goes on an alcohol binge. A binge which consists of our one and only beer. So yeah, knock yourself out, bud. We have managed to gather up a distressing amount of tattered clothes. We really need- wait, can you hear that? Oh, bollocks! Well, I guess you should never take an alcoholic polar bear's last beer. Now, should you, Lynx? You see, the real magic of Rimworld are these absolutely wacky stories that you would struggle to find anywhere else, and I'm all for it. I'm also for making us some real weaponry, and it is about time too. I'm not too sure we would be able to handle another raid at this point, so let's get to it. We slap down a loading bench where we can craft us some much needed ammo. But this throws us another hurdle to deal with. Steel. Fortunately, we have a workforce of refugees at our disposal. As well as, of course, little old Coldwell. Since Gumpo isn't too chuffed about his lack of spiritual headwear, we will next go for complex clothing. Back to the loading bench, where Coldwell crafts through the night in order to get Lass's big LMG resupplied. The next morning, some traders come in, and they have a dubious amount of human meat to sell to us. So we trade them some human skin for some human meat. Seems we are cut from the same cloth. After a spot of completely ethical commerce, some mad monkeys. They barrel their way into our base, while we just sit inside safely and watch the fireworks. This dum-dum thought it would be wise to let off a grenade, right next to a couple of his buddies. Just as quickly as the mayhem started, it was over. But only for a moment. Our drunken polar bear pal decided to go for Fahina, but quickly found something else to gnaw on. And then completely out of left field, a mad elk, who really knows how to throw down. This fuzzy fella is having none of it. It takes three of us to finally put an end to the madness. After all those crazy activities, we get a message from Paul who has a little proposition for us. He wants us to kill Faina and Lo in exchange for some top tier medicine. You have yourself a deal, sir. Since we are all a bit gun-ho, it's finally time to deal with our drunken polar bear. It's a little sad to see him go. We have such fond memories, but it's for the best. So ends the drunken polar bear saga. We get our prized Glitter World medicine. A special occasion. It's Coldwell's birthday. She's hit the ripe old age of 82. This comes along with cataracts in her one remaining eye. So I believe it's safe to say she can't see too good. And with that, along with the fact that she's not able to talk or hear, she must have a rather interesting existence to say the least. Well, here's to you, Coldwell, and your determination to potter on. And potter on she does. She has researched us complex clothing. We get a small respite from the craziness of the rim, at least for the time being. We can work on blocking ourselves off to any potential external threats, as well as begin to make ourselves some new swanky threads with a tailoring bench. Gumpo is still in need of his academic apparel. Unfortunately, we can't make the head wrap with human leather, so he's just gonna have to wait on that one. 
again. Some angry imps make an appearance, who really didn't put up much of a fight. I don't really blame them, they were very heavily outgunned. Let's return to the tailoring bench again, where we put together a bunch of clove kits to help us get through the winter. This will be Coldwell's job for the next while. I find it rather fitting that our granny is knitting away, making everyone some new garbs. Gumpo and Lass are hit with the flu, which gives Gumpo an opportunity to test out his magical healy hands. Beautiful. They will just be resting up for a bit. Is what I would say if Gumpo didn't go into a food binge and started eating all of the brown goop. Regardless, looks like it's down to our grandmother figure to look after everyone while they are feeling poorly. The next morning and Gumpo is still guzzling. We really need to keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't take a turn for the worst. He looks like he should be fine. Now, by this point, I had completely forgotten about Little Razor here and noticed something. She's a druggie and will die in due course if she doesn't get her fix. Since during this season we cannot grow a single thing, there is only one real option. A mad caribou runs into our storeroom and gives Gumpo a couple of bonks. Little did this dear know Gumpo has friends who's got his back. Lass puts a stop to the madness. Now we've got ourselves plate armour, we put our sights on something a little bit more practical. Furniture. During the epic melee between Gumpo and the cupboard caribou, I noticed things were getting a little crowded in there, and I think we are better than just haphazardly throwing things on the muddy ground, so it's time for a bit of shelving. Our new uniforms are done and I think they are rather dashing. We are very close to sealing ourselves off to the outer world, just a couple more walls to go. Before we could complete our trap tunnel, a bunch of greenskins decide to come and say hello. There are a fair few of them, so we line up and take aim down the corridor. But there is just too many of the buggers, and they make it to our front lines. Last, let's loose one final devastating volley, sending the rest scurrying off. Not much harm really came to us, just a couple of stabs here and there, which was easily patched up. They uh, definitely came off worse. Finally, we can be a bit more civilized with complex furniture. No longer will we randomly throw things on the floor, like barbarians. We are going to construct a load of shelves to store all of our goodies. A little side note, our cupboard caribou is still alive and kicking. Seems we've got a sturdy one. We also have another natural meditator amongst us, in the form of Coldwell. Really not too sure how I hadn't noticed before, but this will really speed up our magical tree. One funny tidbit I would like to share. Because Coldwell is deaf, you can't actually disturb her sleep. This did really tickle me. I couldn't tell you why. We begin to tear down all of the local trees, to put them towards something a little bit more useful than oxygen, to store all our slabs of meat, human skin and other bits and bobs. Speaking of things to store, it's about time we hack through this chunk of jade we were blessed with by the Rimworld gods, and turn it into something majestic. Fences. And while we were sprucing up the place, how about adding a game of your board? Lovely. Seeing some instant use. Apparently we had a yak, who was eaten by a bear. So rip yak one, I guess. Time to start putting together the classic corridor of spike traps. But before we can get those things into motion, some baddies turn up. Actually wielding some guns this time maybe a worthy adversary at long last. Uh, no, not really. They just funneled into their doom. And the remaining survivors make a hasty retreat. It seems our cupboard caribou is throwing a hissy fit. Now we should probably go in there and just put it out of its misery. But I've grown rather fond of this little chap, so we'll just give him some time to cool off. And some time indeed was correct. It goes at it for a very long time. 
still no regrets. We have a unexpected guest dropped off right outside our perimeter, who has the making of a fine unwilling helper. But by the time we send someone over to pick her up, she's already on her way off. She'll never know how lucky she got. Oh shush, look, our cupboard caribou has finally tuckered itself out. About time. Speaking of time, this bear is about to have a really shit one. It decided to hunt lass. Silly bear. Let's make those bedrooms a little less bleak now, shall we? A spot of marble should do the trick. Talking of tricks, Gumpo can finally learn a magical one. The anima tree is ready. After the, the magical tree pulsy circle thingy, we can take a look at what he got. Ah, not the best one. Maybe it will become useful further on down the line. Was that foreshadowing? Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's pretty useless to us. The cupboard caribou is at it again. We should really end this. I just can't bring myself to do it. I mean, just look at it. I couldn't possibly. We have ourselves some guests, one of which finds their way into our storage building and consequentially in the line of fire of our angry friend. This absolute brute stabs our wild pet an inch from death. I don't know what came over me, but this wretched creature has some sentimental value. I couldn't possibly let the poor thing die. So Gumpo is sent in to save this little chap's life. Now time for something that couldn't be further from little. A couple of elephants. We rush to our defence stations, but they slip through a wall that has yet to be repaired, and we have to resort to the tried and tested tactic of kiting, which worked out great. A sad moment for us. Our little cupboard caribou has got itself a couple of infections that went unnoticed during all the commotion. In a somewhat poetic end, this guy will become part of us through the process of cellular respiration. A fancy pants way of saying, we're going to eat it. Ah yes, don't ask about the dead kid. Coldwell is still moping about it. Gumpo comes down with ye old plague, and is going to have to reside himself to his room. He'll have to sit out this next invasion. I'm sure Lass and Coldwell can handle this by themselves. Right? Just a quick reminder for anyone who needs to know, Coldwell has one eye. That has a cataract, so bear that in mind. Lass manages to take down a couple leading the pack, but they make their way to Coldwell. Lass does manage to scare them off, but Coldwell is down and is in need of dire rescue. Gumpo is woken from his plague-ridden slumber and attempts to save Coldwell's life. But... Ah, she was fine. It takes more than that to finish off this tough old bird. It was a little too close for comfort though. In some less heartstring tugging news, Gumpo has developed his immunity. So that's nice. Oh look, Coldwell's taken a nap outside. What is she like? She is a rather determined one, I'll give her that. With a bit of downtime, we are expanding our vegetable range with some corn and rearming the traps for the next inevitable raid. I realised looking back on this that I made a rather schoolboy error by deciding to make all the traps out of granite. No idea how I missed this, but uh, there you go. Maybe the Rimworld gods were laughing at my naivety and sent these deers to trigger all of my traps, the ones with stupidly high workloads to construct, and then sent in a raid to really rub it in. I would say lesson learned, but I never noticed. Yeah. But enough of that, we've got some nasty gentlemen posturing for an attack. And they even have some shooty bang bangs. The first couple hit the dirt easy enough, but Lass takes a bullet to the stomach. After pushing off the first group, some emergency field surgery is needed. So Gumpo patches Lass up, and then we prepare for the next wave. This time was significantly easier, however. So a little bit more of tending to Lass and we can just go on about our day. The next day a trader comes by and we get our hands on a bin. 
Now this may sound a little mundane, but this sucker really is a game changer when it comes to dirt management. I would recommend. We also spot a bolt action rifle amongst the chaos. A nice little upgrade for Gumpo. This also means Coldwell can get the Pumpy, which is much better suited to her field of vision. Now let's just take a little step back from all this war and bloodshed and enjoy the moment a bit with a party of eating. It looks like everyone's having a grand old time. We also expanded the freezer, just a smidge, for this year's harvest. So yeah, that's exciting. I honestly can't sing this little thing's praises highly enough. It's keeping our kitchen nice and clean. Sometimes it's all about the little things. Right, enough of that. We have got ourselves flak armor and can move on to bigger and better weapons. So we are going to need places to store these bigger weapons on our persons. We put in an order for some tactical vests and backpacks. Coldwell is more than happy to just knit away. A fire breaks out due to some faulty electronics right inside of our storage building. This was a bit worrying due to all the flammable things in there, but fortunately Gumpo wasn't messing around. Some other folks who aren't messing around are these fine gentlemen who quickly quash a raid attempt. After their heroic actions, they vanish off into the night. Well, thanks for the food, fellas. This will go spiffingly with our freshly grown rice. But that will just have to wait. We've got some kitties coming our way, who pose next to zero threat. So this was a easy sweep. So it's rice time and corn time. It is also time to construct some new buildings. We lay out the blueprint for our new egg-shaped building of worship, as well as a new workshop where we can craft all of our knickknacks. Over the years, we have accumulated a lot of stuff. So why not burn it all? Who doesn't like a spot of fire? Well, that was a little anticlimactic. Maybe give it another go. Ah, that'll do. Later that night, we can draw some more magical powers from the tree again. Now let's see what we got. This isn't actually too terrible. When we have some unwilling helpers, we can suck out their life force to regain our psi focus, and we'll have some unwilling helpers soon. I promise. The egg room of worship is finally done, and we can place inside a bunch of human skinned drums. Lovely. An actual challenge. A mechanoid cluster who will knock out all of our electronics if we don't have anything to say about it. So time is of the essence here. We send out the squad to pepper it with shots from afar until the droid bodyguards retaliate. And then all hell breaks loose. A very poorly timed visit from the exotic goods trader who gets absolutely smashed into the ground. They have left behind a lot of goodies, however. We really wouldn't mind getting our hands on those. But, you know, mechanoid cluster in the way. So Lass and Gumpo have to take turns returning for ammo and then coming back out to throw out some pot shots. At this range, it is rather difficult to hit the target all the time. The very last defender comes out as Gumpo runs out of ammunition. I thought we might have to engage in some circular kiting, but it actually went down. This tedious process went on throughout the night, until it eventually went down. We managed to snag a couple more turrets before the EMP blast wore off, but we really must return home for now, to rest up and regroup. We've got a couple of serious needs to take care of. They are both unsurprisingly a little upset. Spending all night outside in the freezing cold, throwing random pot shots into the darkness against an unknown force that is way more technologically advanced than you would do that to you. So let's cut them some slack. We have almost gone through all of our ammunition, so Coldwell works away rearming the frontliners. And as Lass goes to grab the next batch of bullets, a mission comes in. Some refugees who beg us to let them stay. For the time being, we could really use the extra hands. 
so we welcomed them with open arms. A couple of fuzzy fellas. Cats and... Uh... You alright? Well, anyway, Lass heads out to take out the last few turrets. And we can claim our spoils. With assistance from our lovely new guests, we can rearrange the kitchen a little to improve the workflow a bit and add a dashing bit of sanitary flooring. Next up, some places to park our butts while we work. And finally, a little tool cupboard. Now the base is starting to come together nicely. Now it has finally come time to say goodbye to the refugees. Is not what's going to happen here. They're not going anywhere. Yarl right really does make us work for it, but Lass is hot on her tail, grabbing her just in the nick of time. So this muddy room will be where they have to live. For now. Now to just convert them. We can't have them getting all moody and putting together a little rebellion, now can we? Looks like this might take a while. But what doesn't take a while is for a yite to go berserk. Gumpo quickly comes in and puts her in her place. What I have noticed is these dangerously pointy objects scattered around the prison. Best to put them out of reach of these fuzzy fellas. Just in case. Now we have a new issue to deal with. Alpha beavers. Which normally wouldn't be too much of a problem, but they have also gone mad. And quickly surround Lass. Fortunately, she's very adept at bonking beavers. Not like that, you dirty little bugger. Gumpo slaps on a band-aid and then she goes on her merry way. Coldwell ensures that this never happens again, but we do have a much bigger threat on our hands. A solar flare. In the frozen tundra during the winter, this can be rather fatal. To make matters worse, we are very low on wood. So yes, problems. And if we didn't already have enough things to be getting on with, we are blessed with a piggy. From the sky. Who we don't have time for. In some more interesting turn of events, another poor soul falls from the sky. This chap is from a friendly faction, so fortunately for him, we do have time for you, sir. Lass's merry ways don't last for very long. She has got an infection. Again, this normally wouldn't be a massive issue, but we have got a lot on our plate right now. So we stick her into the geezer room, right next to this rather gaunt looking fella. Speaking of which, is he quite alright? There's something just off about him. He looks like a skeleton with a bit of stuck on hair. Ah, uh, well, regardless, the solar flare finally ends, relieving some of the pressure. But Gumpo has got himself food poisoning, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to tend to Lass. Now, what is going to make it very difficult to tend to Lass is a tantrum. Luckily, after a very short while, he does snap out of it. And some more luck, a crisis of belief for Cat. This will make conversion a little bit easier. But things are looking very dicey for Lass. She was getting some fairly poor tens from Coldwell. So it's time to roll out the good stuff. Glitter World Medicine. All we can do now is sit back and hope. Well, that was a little close. I honestly thought that was the end of Lass. We get another crisis of belief. This time from your right. This is shortly followed by the conversion of Cat. Now we just need to get her to agree to help us. Which shouldn't be too difficult. Things are beginning to turn around. This sickly looking chap can just about walk, so it's time to send him off to fend for himself. He'll survive. I think. We have got our very first unwilling helper. Welcome aboard Cat. She sets herself off to dress up in the finest clothes human leather can provide and begins her new life of hitting stone and steel. Which means the regular folk can focus on much more important things, such as research. Your right goes berserk again and attacks Cat. Lass is right around the corner and comes in with the assist. This little rebellion should be put down fairly Last smashed her head into pieces. 
Oh well. So ends this chapter of The Nice Nation. They finally have a new pair of helping hands. But who knows what they'll face further on down the line. So yeah, that was that. I appreciate your time. Do subscribe if you feel so inclined. Stay happy, and I'll see you around.